Hey guys, it's Agnes Dermer again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really gonna help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm gonna be continuing the videos on developing an application in AR with AR Foundation. I've been showing you some of the things that I added previously, such as VFX that we're gonna be adding in AR. I also show you some improvements that we did in the user interface, such as creating a Photoshop file where we can use basically sprites and incorporate those sprites into Unity. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna show you some of the features that I added, such as ability to draw in AR, which I think it still needs improvement. And I'm gonna be talking about that in this video. So for now, let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I have so far and added this weekend. I've been working quite a bit on making sure that I have all the features added and then also adding a lot of different things to the user interface. You can probably notice that I have a couple of new icons. I have this icon right here, also a lot of different things that are overlaying right now. So let me show you how the application works right now by just running it in Unity. And then I can walk you through some of the implementations and things that I added. So if I hit play, and there we go. So still have the, you know, move devices slowly. So this is so that we can start tracking things in AR. And I might move that out and not do it right away and maybe have a button that in initiates the experience. But for now, you can just click on this button. And then these are some of the settings that I have. So I, I told you in the beginning that I wanted to create an application that was going to be specifically with VFX. And you can basically go here and look at some of the effects. Can see that I now have a friendly, a friendly name for each effect. Also, this is, this is actually really looking really good because there's also a black background behind each effect. So I'm, I'm using a shader to make sure that that blends nicely with the gray background. So I'll show you that in a minute. And then, so I can basically, you know, change it and look at all the different effects that I currently have. I added a couple of changes. The the basically the scale of this video texture wasn't wasn't all the way it wasn't correct it was set to like 600 and 500 so it looked a little bit stretched so i fixed that also there was a bug with the previous and right selection i also have the so now everything is just overlaying pretty nice this one is one effect that i added in this weekend and the reason for that one is because i want to basically show you how it looks if i go if you go inside of a portal because we're gonna be you know seeing that in AR and that's gonna be giant. That's gonna be as, as big as you as a person is in in average. Now if we look at the next one, this one is really cool and people really enjoy a tweet that I that I made about this one. Because this one is snow and I also have a collider, a plane collider collider on the bottom. I'm gonna show you that effect in a minute so you can see how it looks. And then if we go to the next one this is one that I had a lot of problems with, and the reason for that is because when I started it, I had millions of particles. In fact, I can probably just go into Twitter and show you the, the one that has millions of particles. Let me just go, I'm not gonna log in. I'll just show you my recent tweets, and you can see that. So this is the one that I, you know, people are really liking, just telling people that this is gonna be a video on its own, and I'm actually gonna make a video about this one. And you can see there's just millions and millions of particles. I've just been playing with different particles effects. This was the original tweet. And so that's that's what that one is. I made this one compatible with mobile. And when I say compatible with mobile, I just basically lessen the amount of particles that I had. Instead of using millions, I just have thousands. It, and it performs really well on my iPhone XS. So I might need to try that on different devices, but that's one that I really enjoy making. And so that's some of the changes that I did there. I also have now a new change for motion. So, so just imagine this, we're creating, you know, we're creating an application where we can place these items in AR, but I mean, they're just, they're basically gonna be idle. They're not gonna be moving, all, other than the movement that we get from the particles, that's gonna be it. So what I wanted to do is also add a feature that it's going to, it's going to allow, allow me to add motions to the elements that I place. So for instance, if I want to, if I want to move this one, let's say that I wanted to move this one on the, let me go ahead and change the axis here. 
Oh, actually, this is not the real. So just imagine that this was going to be the Y axis and I wanted to rotate this on Y. So it would look more real if I add a motion to this. And, and so for instance, if I wanted to add a motion like this on the, on the Y axis, I could select the motion, basically the motion button, and then I can assign a specific motion. If I wanted to change the motion to X, if I wanted to change the, mo the motion to, X, uh, to Z, then I could do that by just selecting this. So I'm gonna have a lot of different motions and there's just gonna have, I'm going to be having other different motions where the the motion is gonna allow me to basically go up and go down and maybe bounce so I can have balls that have fire. So there's a lot of things that I could do. I can have a tree that basically is made of particles and it can be rotated. So there's a lot of things that, that, I'm, that I have as ideas that I, that I might implement but for, for sure, I'm going to be having different motions, at least 10 motions when I, when I release the app. And then for settings right now, I just have, you know, whether I'm going to allow placing a single object or allowing placing multiple objects. So multiple objects means that I'm going to not only allow, I'm not going to be destroying the, the object that I placed previously. This is just going to always keep, you know, keep placing more and more objects. And I can also do motion, uh, object selection and then move those objects around. But if I select a single object, what's going to happen is if I if I add a new object by just going into effects and adding a new one, it's going to destroy the previous one. So that's what this option is going to be. And then this is going to be for movement constraints. So let's say that I want to move it just on the X axis. I can move it on X. If I want to do it on Y, I can do it on Y. So just some different movement options I, I want to, you know, experiment with. And then, and then of course, the X. So the, the bigger feature that I'm going to be implementing, and I actually implement it, but it doesn't work quite well, and it's actually the painting brush. So right now I can go into painting and I can just, you know, paint and, and do something like that, or I can change, I also can change the brush size, I can change the color. You can see how that randomly picks a color. And if I want to do, let's say that I want to do a blue, and I'm using a gradient shader so that it allows me to basically assign a gradient from you know from one color to another and then you know i can i can basically paint and you can see how that looks in fact you can see the lines right here as they are getting drawn and i can just move it but the problem with this implementation is this works well for and i did this implementation in virtual reality it works really well in virtual reality because i'm always using the position of the controller but in ar it, things are a little bit different. You need to have what's called an anchor and make sure that you have an anchor on each line. And that's what I need to implement. I need to implement what's called a reference point. And for each line, I'm gonna have a reference point so that the so the AR kit or AR core can keep track of those lines in augmented reality and then they just don't move around. So right now what's happening is I draw the lines, but the, the trackers are not getting track, meaning that the, there's no awareness of AR. It's just basically, you know, lines somewhere in the, you know, somewhere in the world, and they're not getting updated correctly, which means they start moving around in a, in a really weird fashion. So I need to make some changes to that implementation. But for now, I, you know, I added the UI components. I can draw. I know that that part works. I can clear lines. I don't know if the brush size is working yet. Oh yeah, it is working. So that's something that I also implemented. If I want to, you know, if I want to change the size, if I want to make it much bigger, then I can do that as well. And I also have some other options, like if I want to reset everything back to default. So this is white. This is the default size. Then I can, you know, go back to to drawing in white. So I can go back here. And then of course for the for the drawing piece, I have a lot of different options because I implemented what's called a draw manager. And this draw manager has just quite a bit of options. Right now, I can detect when, when I want to start drawing. So this is just a Boolean to allow the system, whenever this is set to true, I'm gonna allow drawing. If it's set to false, it's not gonna draw. So if I go here and I set this to false, then it's not gonna allow me to draw. And this is so that I can toggle between select, selecting a visual effect or actually drawing. So I'm gonna have those different modes. This might change to an enum, and I might have an enum for drawing, an enum for effects. I actually have one already for the UI, but I need to implement one that is going to be more of a game mode versus a UI mode. So that's one thing that I need to do. Also, this is the distance from the camera. This deter determines you know, how far I want to be positioning these effects. So 
right now what I'm what I'm doing behind the scenes is I'm just basically placing that at a specific distance from the camera. So this tells the system to, you know, to do to use one meter from the camera. Also the lines, if I go to the line prefab, this is just gonna be it's a line render and that's what I'm using for, for the drawing. A line render and I have just you know all the different options for the line render. If you're not familiar with these, uh, make sure that you go to the documentations in Unity and look at the line renderer because that is a feature that I would recommend you learn. So let me go back to the draw manager. So I have the line. I also have different properties that I use for overriding the how many vertices I have in the corners of the line. So basically how many vertices I have here so we can have a little roundness. Also the anchor vertices. And this is so that we can, so the system has something called simplify. And a line, line render can be simplified by giving it a tolerance. So what happens if you sim if you run this and you pass in this flow value, it's gonna simplify that line depending on the value that you passed in. This is gonna be the difference between one point to another. So if I make this number lower, it's gonna create more vertices as I, as I keep drawing. If I make it bigger, it's gonna be, you know, one vertice here, let's say that, I make it, let's say that we have one meter from here to here, and I change that to one. It's gonna be a straight line if I start drawing from this point over to this point. But if I make it to, you know, half of that, it's going to add a line and a point right here and a point right here. So it's gonna be three vertices instead of just two vertices. And then this is just for detecting button presses and just different things that I'm that I'm using. So that that is the implementation of the of the line. I have the brush, the clear clearing of the lines, a random color generator, which which I think is really cool. And then of course I have some of the effects that I just show you and then some of the motions. So let me show you some of the effects and how they look like. So I'm going to go. So I also changed the way that I'm implementing the loading of these effects. So instead of adding those effects and keeping them in memory, what I'm doing them is I'm, I'm loading them from resources. So I moved the whole prefab folder to the resources and I also have it under effects and I also have it under lines. I might have different lines, lines that are dotted. I might have lines that are, you know, have a different look. So I created a folder for lines as well. So the effects that I want to show you that I implemented, one was going to be is the snow. So if we go into the snow effect, you can see that th this effect actually looks really cool in, in AR. Let me go back into Twitter and I can show you if I have so this is a video of me in the parking lot showing you how it collides with the planes. And you can see how, you know, we have big pieces of snow and then we also have the collider that is on the bottom. And this is basically what I'm looking at right now. And this is fully customizable. If I wanted to change the thickness of the, of the snowflakes, I could do that. If I wanted to change the collision, I could do that also through the graph. So that's one effect. The, the other effect that I also added was the sun and that's one that I that I really had a lot of fun with. So let me just drag and drop that. Let me try that one more time. There we go. And and this one was really it's really cool because it so if you look at it, there are particles that are, you know, they're idle, they're moving a little bit and then all of a sudden they're moving quite fast. And the reason for that is because I'm using what's called a period it's called a period time. And the way that that, that works is you can give it a minimum and a maximum number. And then based on that minimum and maximum number is going to go from minimum to max. And then you, you can tell it how long you want that to last. So I'm going to show you how this is implemented in a, in, in a video that I'm going to do today on creating a song with visual effects graph. So make sure that you watch that so you understand how I made this. And then also there's no, it's, it might be another video that I can do on how I made that. Let's see the other one that I also did. I think, I think that was pretty much everything I did flat fire floor and I think I showed you the comment before but I can show you that one more time let me drag it and drop it there we go and this is the one that I also did uh, previously for another visual effects graph and the one the, the thing that I want to do on this one is I want to let me see if I can go I'm trying to get used to the new interface and let's just go and select the graph there we go global Okay, it's not going to let me select, but what I want to do is I want to rotate these on a specific axis and then when I select the motion, it's going to have that motion of rotating. Or we can do something where, you know, we can just move it from, you know, give it a little bit of rotation on X and Y just so that it looks like it's, it's it has more motion. So that will be one of the things that I add in the future. And let me just go ahead and delete 
this tree and so some of the other things that I that I also added I did a lot of changes on the menu as you can see so let me go back into the user interface so there's a lot of things going on in here and there's going to be a lot more as I work on this so one of the things that I have is right now I have four different panels and I have something called a UI pane so the UI pane is responsible for fading in and fading things out it's also responsible for for keeping track of itself as a as a, with an ID because I have something called a UI pane manager and that manager allows me to go from one pane to another so what I can do here just to show you that all the different layers is I have different layers for each one of them so this one is going to be the layer for the for the effects I'm going to have I also have a layer for the you know for the actual painting of the of the AR draw so if you want to draw in AR that's going to that's going to be some of the options in here and then I also have one for emotions and the one for motion it's very similar to one for effects I told you that I wanted to make that generic the reason why I want to make that generic is because I wanted to make sure that I could reuse that between these two or any other options that I had in the future and then the last one it's basically the settings and then I also have the whole thing it's going to be part of the menu panel which is what contains this so all these layers are responsible for you know moving and controlling the settings in AR and like I said I'm going to have a lot more things added in the future so for the effects you can see that the effects and the motions are very similar because I have an effects panel and I also have a motions panel they both have an effects basically a component that control that has all the different effects inside and if I look at motions it has basically a, a component that has all different motions so if I wanted to add a new motion all I really have to do is just copy and paste this node and then that's going to allow me to have a new, a new motion I also have to change some of the properties in here I just need to give it the node name and also the friendly name and I'm using the same component as I'm using on the effects the reason for that is because they both work similarly each one of them have a video and that video is basically a, a snapshot of what the effect is or a snapshot of what the motion is so if I go ahead and hit play you can see that I let me see if that changing the Z axis shouldn't shouldn't have changed anything and yeah it looks like I screwed it all up but let me go ahead and let me go ahead and change all the all these values again and we'll just change the value of Z there we go and then hit play and if I go into motions you'll see that I'm playing a video so if I go here and you'll see that I'm playing a video so the motions panel is the one that is active because I selected that node so therefore this UI pane is the one that is active and then I have the first motion so if I change to the second motion you can see that this now becomes and this is all it is is just a snapshot of a video a video clip that I have and then this has a raw image if you don't understand how this works make sure that you watch the previous videos where I talk about how to grab a video player texture and then render that information into the raw image texture and then if I go into effects it's going to be something very similar I go into the effects and then now the first node in the effect is the one that is active and then if I go keep going forward you can see that now I'm on the last effect and then I can go back so that's honestly everything that I have done so far so just you know as an overview I show you how the painting brush works how the effects works what I'm going to be doing for motions how they look like right now and then I show you how the user interface has been changed since the last time that I show you a video on Visually 5 AR app so I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this just bear with me it's going to get cooler and cooler as I work more on this app and I appreciate you guys time if you have any questions please let me know all right guys thank you much for watching this video I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what I just showed you please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code Thank you very much, guys.